Companies spend loads of time and huge bucks cultivating leadership. It's seen as a major driver of business success, but it is something that requires constant focus. Today we take a look at Scotiabank's approach to leadership. We're joined by Marianne Hasseld Schilter. Let me ask you first of all how you define leadership at Scotia. How do you think about it? We, we think about leadership in terms of uh, people at the director level and above and people that are managing managers, so more senior that are responsible for executing a vision and, and bringing a team together to, to execute on our business strategy. So it is senior people who mm -hmm. are um, evolving into the most senior people in right. the bank. Right. And how would you describe the word leadership? So if those are the people that you consider the leadership of the bank, how would mm -hmm. you describe the word? And I ask because mm -hmm. any business book would have a whole range of definitions and I'm curious to know what, what resonates within your culture. Within our organization? Yeah. Leadership, I think we look at it in terms of it is the, um, the top, not the top people, but people that are managing which is, it sounds a little bit repetitive, but it's that, that group that helps steer the direction of the organization in terms of strategy and getting the people uh, involved in terms of executing that strategy. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple components to your strategy, mm -hmm. leadership resource planning, leadership development, and performance management. I want to start with resource planning. What is leadership resource planning? Leadership resource planning is, is basically about supply and demand. It's right. about looking at our leadership demands, which is really in terms of vacant leadership positions that are coming up due to retirements or due to growth in the business or, or new markets we're going into. So there's a demand for a leader. So what's the strategy around that and what type of leader do you need? And the supply really is our talent pool. And our talent pool is, is is our current leaders but also our future leaders trying to identify those people that have the potential to uh, be successful at more senior levels and then being very focused in terms of targeting uh, development activities to get the right people ready when the when the jobs become available in the future. Would another organization call it succession planning? Is that they fair? may call it succession planning, Similar? yes. Similar? Yeah. Yep. Another component of that, this whole idea of leadership development, mm -hmm. what are the things that form the foundation of your, of your leadership development plans? When we look at leadership development, we look at one of the th things we did over the past year is really articulate what does a leader look like? What does a typical Scotiabank leader look like and what's the profile? So what are the leadership competencies that that person needs? as well as the core values and then some of the experience that help build a uh, strong leader. So we, we, get, uh, we issued a, uh, a profile so that people have something to benchmark against. And when we look at development, we really look at how is the person, uh, what, do the, what does the person need to develop in terms of their technical skills, but also their leadership competencies and experience in terms of their current role, but then also in terms of future roles that may be uh, in line with their aspirations. And what would some of those competencies be? Um, for example. For example, yeah. you know, one of the good ones, and when we look at leadership, we always say one of the most important things in a leader is developing another, developing yourself, but also developing your team and individuals on your team. Uh, so, for example, one of uh, the things in our leadership competency is self-awareness and uh, building team capacity hmm. and coaching. And so we have uh, tools that help us assess those kinds of competencies. So, for example, um, People participate in multi-rater assessments, or commonly referred to as 360. 360. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so they participate in that, and they get feedback from their boss, their peers, uh, their subordinates in terms of their nine leadership competencies, and that helps them then um, identify areas of strength and also areas that they may want to focus on for very targeted development. Um, so from an individual perspective, they benefit from that, but from an organizational perspective, for example, we benefit because we can look at aggregate data and say, okay, from a systemic perspective, leadership and leadership competencies, are there gaps that we can fill through specific training programs? Hmm. So for example, um, this one of the things that we did find is in terms of our leadership strategy, um, coaching was not one of our, our, you know, coaching was an area that we could really improve on in terms of our leaders and their requirement and accountability to develop leaders. So this year uh, we introduced a coaching program for VP level 
and then one for SVPs and executive vice presidents to actually learn, to, to learn, learn how to coach people. How to coach. And we have similar programs that are really for anybody who's managing people, but this one was very targeted at the VP level and above. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Performance management is the third piece mm -hmm. of that leadership uh, strategy. How does that tie in? Performance management ties into really part of um, someone's um, accountabilities in their current role. And it's looking at uh, the objectives that are set at the beginning of the year and uh, measuring performance against a balanced scorecard. So at Scotiabank, we introduced a balanced scorecard approach to uh, performance evaluation. Um, several years ago and it's focused very much on four quadrants on our financial results on our customers on operational matters and most importantly the foundation is on our people so so leaders actually and people that are managing have um, as part of their performance uh, metrics uh, people um, people measurements that they're what responsible would be, what for. What would be some of those people measures? Think things like um, employee satisfaction, okay. employee engagement. Yep. And then when we look on the leadership front, we're looking at development plans, the existence of development plans. Mm -hmm. So we need to crank it up another notch to say, okay, the plans exist now. Are they being discussed? Are they actually being right. executed? So that's, that's coming down the pipeline. Where does attrition fit? Do you, do you measure attrition as a part of uh, the, the scorecard on leaders? We do look at attrition in terms of, uh, really, in terms of uh, loss of high uh, potential people. So right. we're looking at, sometimes attrition is good, but yep. also the regretted turnover. The regretted turnover we look at. And, and one of the things we want to do is really analyze why did those people leave? Was it because of lack of opportunity? Was it because of... You know, what was the circumstance around uh, surrounding their departure and what lessons learned? You have an extraordinarily large and extraordinarily diverse business. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, at once take advantage of critical mass because you're so big mm -hmm. and at the same time, you know, customize and make sure that what you're doing works within various units, various regions, various countries? Mm -hmm. Do that. I, I think a lot of it is, you know, it's the kind of global local perspective that you have. You know, what are the guiding principles uh, in terms of leadership and leadership development and leadership identification and then cascading those principles. So what may work well in Canada might not be the right model um, in Mexico or El Salvador, but the guiding principles there about identifying people with talent and and targeted development plans and uh, and succession planning, those principles are fairly consistent. They may get executed in a different manner, but the more senior you go in terms of identifying leaders, um, then we start to look at it much more from a global perspective to say, okay, those senior uh, people are actually part of the corporate uh, asset pool hmm. and so their careers are much more focused in terms of moving them around to to try to get them the right experiences they need. I interviewed the co-author of a book called Made in Canada Leadership recently mm -hmm. and one of the things she talked about was the demographic shift that is underway here in Canada mm -hmm. and in her opinion this will lead to what she calls a crisis in leadership. Mm -hmm. Where do you weigh in on that debate? I think uh, it potentially could lead there, but I think it with proper planning, just like the Y2K could have led to a right. crisis situation with proper planning, and I think we still have the time to do it, uh, you can uh, develop people to make sure that you do have that talent pool. And part of our focus on leadership is to make sure that we have good leaders in place because good leaders attract talented people. They also retain talented people and they develop them. And so it's kind of one of those things that we recognize as a priority for us to achieve any of our business goals is we need to have the right leaders in place. Hmm. And through targeted focus, we can, we can actually um, accelerate people's development you know, put them in stretch assignments right. earlier. What, one last question before we go. Your title includes Top Talent Management. That's right. What does that mean? Well, it's unfortunately you must get asked it's not all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, top talent management is really a subset of our key people. So we look at key people as people that have the ability to be successful at the next level. Top talent really is that that a subset of that that really have been identified as people that have the potential to go to the executive ranks in the bank. Right. So, and when so you it's much more hands-on, one-on-one, getting to understand. Uh, their aspirations, their experiences, their cumulative experiences, as well as then, uh, you know, what are the opportunities out there so we can try to marry them better. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Marianne, thank you for being here today. Thank you. We appreciate your Thanks. time. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and have a great work day.